Lego land. There he is. He's motion. I am He's back. back. You actually had a moment of privacy there that you weren't being streamed or recorded, I guess. Oh, no. That Darn. was your big opportunity. And all we talked about was, was theme parks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How very wasteful. Jeff, I have a tech question for Certainly. you. This is a challenge that I've run up against. We've been using in the CMC 11 uh, creativity and multicultural communication. We've been using the Blackboard Collaborate version 11 and had a few challenges with it. Um, I'm trying to figure out what to use that we can record, that <clears throat> excuse me, presenters can upload uh, their materials, where we can have a chat session, and it'll take. Um, a large amount of people, if a large amount of people choose to join. Suggestions, thoughts, ideas? Great question. Um, I would suggest Big Blue Button, but that didn't fly so well. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't quite work out too well last Although, week. Although, you know, I got contacted by um, Stephen, Stephen Dom, or Downs? Dame, who, who actually, not Downs, uh, the guy who oh. was running the Big Blue Button. Uh, he's oh. out of Maine, and I invited him to stop by to kind of because I, I feel bad. I mean, bl Big Blue Button's really a a project. I think with the it's hard in the right place, and it <laughs> such a dismal flop. Uh, yeah. Um, what well, wasn't a dismal flop? It just didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, yeah, it didn't work. It has potential. Yeah. Um, you know, the Fuse meeting that they wound up in seemed to be actually pretty nice. Uh, that's true, but that's a pay. Yeah. That's a four pay. Oh. And trying to stay in the in the spirit of MOOCs of free and open, um, that's a challenge. You know, if you can get the Hangout recorded, Hangouts actually, if you can hang it out, hang out and stream it like we're doing, it's actually a pretty decent little interface, especially now that the Hangouts with Extra have the presentation functionality built in. It's oh, a little... I didn't know that Hangouts did. Yeah, this is a Hangout with Extras. These days when you start a Hangout, you can do a regular Hangout or you can say, would you like to try Hangout with Extras? And so that's what this is. And so we've got an option of having a collaborative um, note here. Is that, that was going to be my question, is that why the um, people, yes, you're, we're now to the right, whereas before we would pop up when we talked, now it's left. It's showing some of your desktop information now. Now, are you get this is in the left part of this Hangout window, you see notes and sketchpad. Right. I just started Correct. a note. You all should have access to. Uh... No. Nope. Let's see. Lisa Lane has access. Oh, that's you. I don't know why only Was... Lisa got access. When I. What about Skype for Education? Are they allowing multiple sign-ins? Uh, Skype for Education. I mean, it would or certainly work for the Skype audio. The classroom. I don't know what Skype is allowing now. So, Jeff, are you recording Hangouts on live stream? I'm recording them on live stream and on um, Screencast-O-Matic. And the Screencast-O-Matic winds up being a, a higher quality version uh, that right. I toss up on YouTube. Yeah, our first, our first session, just, you know, I like, I like to let people know what happens and what workarounds are. Our first session, um, we were in the new Blackboard Collaborate, and it seems that there had been a prior session in Spanish for a group from somewhere. <laughs> they did not leave in time. Um, I had told them that we had the room reserved. Evidently, some of them stayed, 
And because some of them stayed, when they stopped their recording, it attached their recording to our recording, and it then got lost in Never Never Land of Illuminate Blackboard. And <laughs> after 10 days, they finally allowed that, due to a privacy concern, they had found it, but they couldn't tell me what was wrong. I finally was able to ascertain that they were linked together. They sent me the link. I then sent it to my tech guy in China who listened to the whole thing, edited it, used live dot one to record it, sent it to me as a file. I then recorded it on YouTube and it is now posted in the course. This is a great question. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, <laughs> which is which is I'm gonna add that to my list of things I don't like about Blackboard. I just noticed host BBB entered the chat room and that is uh the BBB is for Big Blue Button, uh, and hey. uh, I'm tossing in the link to the Hangout there. Uh, and the question on the floor is um, options other than Blackboard for collaborative presentations. So we'd be delighted if uh, if you could join us. Um, and while we're we're hopefully waiting for him to join us, can you kind of tell us a little bit about the MOOC that's going on? Yeah, it is uh, creativity and multicultural communication. Uh, my co-facilitator is uh, Dr. Betty Lawrence. And we have both worked internationally in education in situ as well as online. We're with the Center for Distance Learning of Empire State College, a division of the State University of New York. Um, <laughs> all those acronyms tossed in together. We've both been with the college for quite a few years, and we've been doing online teaching, online facilitation, online delivery of degree programs, of degrees, uh, granting of degrees, for about 10 or 11 years. Prior to that, um, it was a slightly different setup, but the Center for Distance Learning always worked with students at a distance not in regular classrooms. So we have that background and that um, history of having gone through some evolutions there. I had become, and so had uh, Betty become, in some of the earlier MOOCs with Stephen Downs and George Siemens. And they each had also been at Empire State College to deliver keynote addresses at two conferences over the last four years. So we, we had met them personally. We were both fascinated with the concept. I find it to be something the connectivist network theory or application more closely aligned with what I believe good education, good learning is. Um, I consider myself a lifelong learner. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm, uh, I'm not below 30. I'm not even below 60. <laughs> so I'm definitely a lifelong learner, but I'm an eager learner. Um, embracing the new technology is something I enjoy. Learning how to code and write programs, I don't enjoy, but I'm learning, I'm willing. Um, and Sam, Rhett Sam in China, has been very helpful for me in that regard. So the course basically deals with the theory aspect of it is um, connectivism, network learning, and meta literacy. From that point, we go into creativity, and creativity in many forms, not just as an artist, but creative, just live. Um, and how creativity enters our lives. Following that, and there are some deliberate creative steps that you can take. And then following that, we go into application and uh, practices, people who are actually practicing creativity in their fields. I have some follow-up questions, but I want to say hello to people who've joined us. We actually get a visual on Lynn today. Hello, Lynn. <laughs> Hi. Well, half a visual. Hi, Lynn. I hope my, I hope my mic's working. I got a nasty message when I first joined. I'd been um, what you hearing earlier, and it plays havoc with my settings. But I'm on my laptop, so you get half of me. <laughs> Sounds good, especially yeah. when you speak loudly or hold the mic close to your mouth. And uh, hello okay. to Francisco. Hello, Francisco. Not getting any audio yet from you, Francisco.
uh, please chime in whenever you can. And Stephen, hello. Not getting audio from Stephen either. Um, I don't know if, well, we just lost Stephen. Um, uh, good luck adjusting settings. Uh, you can send a shout out in the chat room if we can do any troubleshooting. Um, and before I ask my follow-ups, any comments or questions for Carol from uh, us Hangouters? Uh, yes, Carol. Uh, yes. How do I'm in the middle of uh, this, is Katie? I'm in the middle of a uh, couple of courses. I'll be finished November, but I'd be interested in joining your MOOC. How would I do that? Uh, I believe that um, the URL was put up in the live stream, but if you just Google CMC11, okay, you should be able to find it. Um, as CDL projects, and I have forgotten the rest of the URL at the moment. Let me see. CDLprojects.com okay. slash CMC11 blog. Thank you, thank you. I'm not being thank a very you. good tech person there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Sounds and join us anytime. Oh, Come play when you want, and you know, lurk if you want, whatever. So is this a course that's being offered for credit to SUNY students and just opened up? It is a MOOC that 15 SUNY students have opted to take for credit. So it's, it's a massive open online course available to anyone free um, and 15 students, one graduate student, 14 undergraduate students have elected to take it in their program. And how are you dealing with assessment and work are there is there stuff they have to do to get credit or they can move yes. their way through it well both there are some expectations um, they have a goal of developing their blog and posting in a weekly basis I also uh, we've also decided that it would be helpful for them to share resources they find through a Digo account or delicious I have them all together on Google Plus, or I'm working on putting them on Google Plus, so we'll have some, some of our own Hangouts during that session. And in the last two weeks, those who are taking it for three, four, or more credits uh, will be doing a presentation. And how's... Oh, hey, Vance. He's frozen. Maybe he's just very still. Now, I, I just a quick question to interrupt. I thought uh, Google Hangouts was limited in the number of people, but you now have a With good number. Eight, I believe the limit is 10. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and Stephen, I want to check in with you. Any audio progress? I don't know if you can hear us, but one thing that we found to work, there, you know, there are the audio settings up top of the Hangout, um, sometimes they don't take. Uh, but if you go to your Gmail, go down to your chat, and find your chat settings and change them there, sometimes they do. But wishing both you and Francisco luck in getting that sorted out. Uh, and Vance, are you audio enabled? I'm going to no. take that as a no. <laughs> All right. Well, you can mine I your way through this hangout. I think he thinks he is, though. Yeah, <laughs> he's talking to himself. Um, so um, how's it going, Carol? You're two or three weeks in? We are, t well, this is the uh, middle of our third week, and as with most MOOCs, you kind of wonder, and folks who are participating are wondering where they are and why they're there and what they're supposed to do. and. You know, it's sort of like you jump into the pond, you learn how to doggy paddle, then you try floating, and then you learn how to swim. <laughs> ah, I got it. There he is. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Learn to swim. You just had to, had to find that little icon, you know. So. <sighs> okay. How's everybody? Super. Do you notice anything different about my background? Yes, it's uh, 
Is someone going to be moving? We're, we're wondering yeah, where the boxes are stashed. The boxes, uh, an army of movers came and took stuff, and uh, they took all the books that were over there. There used to be books right there, and uh, they left somehow the, the little, uh, uh, that right there, they left that thing on the wall. Is that a snowshoe? <laughs> Uh, no, it's a, it's a kind of a, an Oh, African. an aboriginal mask. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I Ooh. guess they were a little bit daunted by it. So anyway. <laughs> I have a little uh, uh, present for Lynn. I was thinking about. There's Stephen. Is that Stephen? Yes, that's Stephen. We've got video. <laughs> I love everybody's faces as they try to figure out, <laughs> get oriented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you do that? So I brought this for Lynn. I thought if you didn't want to come online, you could bring your avatar. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I thought that was an easy solution, you know, if you don't want I to. Keep mean, I keep meaning to send you an IM in uh, Second Life. Uh, I've just been a little bit overwhelmed. Oh, uh, I haven't had a week. chance either. So don't now, worry Kate, about it. Are you I'm sorry. Are you leading the Second Life group in uh, Change? No, 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 no. Oh. That's not. Is me. there a Second Life group I, in Change? Yes. My um, question. There are actually two of them. Yes. I found out about. Well, I know Vance had told us about Change, but I was uh, somebody I know from Second Life, but I'd never see in Second Life. But I know via Twitter announced it, and then later he said, "Let's start a Second Life group," and then. He said, oh, no, someone else has. Uh, is my name Espy or something? <laughs> Hi, Bernie. <laughs> this is a full house today. Hey, hello, Bernie. Bernie, I have a Hello, hello. Uh, great to connect with you. This is Bernie. Mr. Fun. Hi, Bernie. Hello, hello everybody. Hi, and Bernie. Stephen, I just want to check in with you again to see if there's any... Hi, any audio? No audio yet. But you are hearing us? Uh, the audio is a little hard to see. There, I mean, you don't know. It's, it's, it's a, a red muted mic at the right to the right of where it says hang out with extras. Oh. All right. Let's see if I can share my my thing and point to that. Uh, would that be this? Because um, y you have these little mute microphone icons on each of the speakers. So you think that that's what's muting your mic. Yeah, those, the, little, the one that's, um, that's highlighted on Bernie's right now looks like you should click that to unmute your mic. But and it's really fact, this little mic there. icon up here, yeah? That's right, and and if you're Oops. muted, yours will be red, and so you need to click there. Yeah, Jeff just muted himself. All right, hey, we, the rest of us gonna have a field day. Let's go. Oh, oh, sorry, he's back again. Oh no, he's gone. The, this is the extras. <laughs> this is the, sh the the desktop sharing that Hangout Extra has. Uh, dear Google Plus, uh, I would like a pointer. I guess it's you can see your mouse, but I would like to yeah have more pointing. Yeah, yeah. sort of a laser pointer. You want to do it from across the room, right? <laughs> um, and Stephen, even if I can, can you hear us, Stephen? Give us a thumbs up. He said, "Hang out rebooted." Yes. Okay. Yes. He um, said. Stephen, hey, uh, the question Carol right. had asked earlier, and maybe you can type the answer. She's running this MOOC. She used Blackboard. It was not a happy experience. She's looking for low-cost and or free alternatives. Low-cost and or free. Monica Hardy. Now it's a hey. party. <laughs> I brought the food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Don't let me interrupt. Not at all. In fact, can you tell us a little about who you are and what you've been up to these days? 
Well, um, Monica, and I live in um, Loveland, Colorado. Been working with kids the last um, about four years. They wrote a plan to redefine school, and we're in year two of their four-year plan. Just moved downtown. Um, the four-year, the end of the four years, has the community as the school, where the high school buildings are resource centers, um, and it's all based on a process of learning rather than a publicly prescribed curriculum. We're doing, yes. research. We're doing research to monitor growth um, through this publicly, I mean, through this um, process of learning, uh, video documentation, so that we can um, eradicate standardized I'm sorry, testing. Carol, just to make you aware, the typing noise is clearly heard. <laughs> So to anyone who wants to do some typing, you might want to use oh, that little sorry. red mute button. I, I apologize in advance for all my audio nagging. Um, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, Monica. No, nagging behooves you. And I met Monica. <laughs> That's not what my other co would say. Uh, no, uh, you're, you're good. I met Monica when she was a Hangout newbie and had all sorts of warped video and everything. And now she's a Hangout expert, co-host of Teachers Teaching Teachers and uh, innovator right. extraordinaire. Wow. Are you in New York? Who, me? Yeah. No, I'm in Loveland, Colorado. I will be in oh. New York next month, though. I'm going to the contact conference that um, Douglas Rushkoff and Vanessa Mimas are putting on. So I'll be oh, there okay. then, but no, I live in Colorado. Uh, I haven't caught your latest podcast then. So I've been listening to Paul Allison and Susan Ettenheim, and I don't haven't come across you yet, so I'm probably a month behind. Yeah, you we were teachers good. teaching teachers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, so there you go. <laughs> uh, so there's any number of directions we can go in, but I do want to check in with Lisa Lane, who is uh, doing all sorts of interesting things out there. How's your your course going? How's your mooking going? How you been? I've missed you. It's <laughs> thank you, Jeff. It's it's going well. Um, we are offering for for folks who don't know, we're offering an open online class, uh, twelve weeks each semester for people who want to learn about the pedagogy of teaching online and learn some tools along the way. And we didn't really intend for it to be a MOOC. It was just sort of a oh, I'm calling it a SMOOC, a small to medium sized open online class. And um, <laughs> we have people uh, trying to join and. Um, that's a little problematic at this point because we are ending week four of a 24-week class and we've noticed that the folks who are adding at the last minute are getting overwhelmed very quickly and are, are dropping back out again. We, uh, what's different here is that there's a sort of a path, there's something to do each week, there's a task, uh, there's readings, so it is structured more like a course than just a, an open online experience. But people are running their own blogs and we're aggregating the blogs to a, a central blog. Um, it's going very, very well and the mentors are trying to meet up so I'm listening very carefully for suggestions of how to make that happen since I have 17 mentors it would overwhelm the Google Plus Hangout thing. It would overwhelm Skype. I tried TalkBox yesterday um, because it's now something that you can you can use uh, directly on a web page and I, I tried to put together a TalkBox video chat which is supposed to take up to 20 and tested it with just one mentor and the video quality and the audio quality was so inferior to what we're experiencing here that um, I'm not sure it's going to work and I'm trying to get the mentors together tomorrow so um, Are they I'm listening all quite carefully. Do you absolutely need Sorry, do you absolutely need video? I mean, this is something I, I mentioned before I bang on about this. Do we need video? <laughs> <laughs> um, these folks are from all over the place and they've been so kind to volunteer to do this or, or be cajoled into doing it. And they are all over the place. And I, it would be nice to see each other because most of us are never going to get to see each other in person. So I, I, I do like video for that when people are very much scattered if it's possible and it, it may not be it may not be possible and it, all 17 may not show up but it would be nice if I had a place where we could all meet each other for the first time and check in does everyone have to be in at the same time 
Well, the idea was each person, what, the way this is structured is I've sort of assigned each person to a set of participants in the class. So each person's kind of in charge of four or five. And I did the group email thing. And, and that was sort of fine. Some people responded to everybody and some didn't. But what's starting to happen is they're kind of taking ownership of, of their people. It's kind of interesting. I, I got an email that said, you know, my students are doing fine. And I thought, this is kind of cool. That, that, and I'd like them to be able to share ideas together. And you don't want to really do that on the main uh, area of the course because there's people there who are struggling and who are working really hard or who haven't quite got it yet. And it would be nice to have a place where the mentors are all in the same place at the same time to kind of talk about what's going on with mentoring. So I would like them all at the same place, same time. Have, have any of you guys ever tried Humto? No. What is that? How do you spell it? I'm trying to, I'm trying to it's J-U-N-T-O. I'm trying to find okay. the link. Um, it's beta form, so like this quality is much better. Um, but you can, it's like the Brady Bunch and you've got the little squares and you can stack 20 people up there so that you can see each other. But again, there's no guarantee. Sometimes we've gone in and it's been really fluent. Sometimes um, it's taken forever just to get everyone on there. So I love the Hangout right now. I would, I would go with what Jeff said and um, have people bow in and bow out, you know, until you got everybody seen. So have you played out with extras before, Monica? Say that again? Have you? This is Hangout with Extras. No. Uh, and it involves, you can do the screen sharing. Which no, I haven't nice. done that. You can do presentation. And thank you. That, that is Junto right there. Jeff put the link up, so. Oh, I'm not in the text chat. And yeah, the other thing, just a little more audio reason. nagging, if I can encourage people to chat in the EdTech Talk chat room as opposed to our little Hangout so we don't get a constant stream of dings. Oh, I was going to for Lisa. Uh, one is big marker. Um, it doesn't record, but uh, Nick Peachy turned webheads onto it and uh, big marker uh, M A R K E R yeah okay so I well that's one place we've experimented with but the, the downside is it doesn't record and I believe really I took a look me. at that this week it looked like big blue button it, oh, I think okay. yeah. can confirm that is that big blue button mm. yes and and Stephen uh, manages hostbbb.com, which is another uh, comparable service. The second suggestion is if, uh, if you want to, we have webheads have an illuminate room that anybody can use. So you could just No, I, I have an, I have a, yeah, no, thank you. I have an illuminator collaborate room um, set up so far. The number of video feeds we can handle, though, is not, not quite what I need. That's kind of one at a time. Yeah, exactly. I wanted something mm -hmm. more like this. Just a few more. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting for this forever, so I'm just happy we have this, you know. I hear you, though. So am I. I'm really happy with this, and I think it's wonderful. And like I said, I might not even need more. Than, than this anyway, and I'll be particularly happy when we can record this internally because that's coming up um, with, with Google Plus is that you'll be able to just record it without Jeff's wonderful but very complex setup. <laughs> Jeff is going obsolete. I am. I am going to be obsolete, which is, is it's, delightful. It's from all that nagging. That nagging is how we've edited it, so we tweaked it. We've tweaked it out of it. And Google probably Jeff said, we just can't take that nagging anymore. Just give, give everybody a record button. <laughs> give him what he wants. Give him what he wants. And you think Google doesn't hear you. You know, Google does hear me. Uh, there, I, on Google+, Plus, someone reshared a, a post from a Google guy who's the Hangout. I don't know if he's a manager, but he's a project something with Hangouts and said, hey, I don't have many friends here, but I'm looking for feedback. <laughs> And I gave my feedback, and he responded, thanks very much. Um, so I, I really feel like Google is 
doing this right. I mean, they're, I think mm -hmm. they've got a great product. They're listening and they're developing based on what users want, not what they think users should want and would serve the company commercially, overtly, like some other Facebook companies. If we could just get education yeah, to do that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm being called away for a minute. The movers took all the um, <laughs> the bottle openers, and I've got a technique, so I'm going to go and apply it. <laughs> Are you going to do this I, on video? I kind of like to see the technique, move. Vance. Yeah, let's so. see that. What oh, good is video okay. if we can't see that? Yeah. Well, it's about technology, isn't it? Let's see. <laughs> yeah. I'll be back in a second. Aww. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> So, Jeff, is this the new version? I mean, I haven't been on a Hangout where it's on the side like this. These days when you hang out, you get the option of, hey, would you like to try Hangout with Extras? It's free for now. Okay. Uh, and the Extras is this the desktop sharing, and you can share like a presentation. Let me see if I can find a presentation, a toss-up. You know what I'd like you to nag about? The age. Yeah. I mean, kids, kids are missing out on this. 21's ridiculous. Yeah. I very much agree. Okay, well, I was curious, so I just looked. I like Google um, Chat a lot because it is so simple. But I was a fan of Skype, and I just looked. I had registered for Skype for the classroom, which is beta. And um, I just looked, and they can take up to six users at this time. Oh, Osvaldo. Nice to see you. Uh, hi, Jeff. <laughs> it sounds like you either, I think you still have the Ustream on, perhaps, or the live stream. Or maybe you're just not using a headset. Wait a second, I'm trying to get organized. Okay, Sorry. while you're doing that, I will go ahead and demonstrate the... The mute button. <laughs> Did you all hear me? Yes. I unmuted. Yeah. Okay, I unmuted myself, and I didn't know if you all heard me. Anyway, I put the link here. I guess this article was written for ESL teachers, but oh. um, um, I just... I joined, uh, I've been curious about Skype for the classroom. I guess it's still in beta. Um, but it seems to do everything but Google, but now Google surpassed the amount of people that can be online. And what about the video sharing? Because I know like I was paying for Skype premium so I could have up to 10 people in a group video chat. It never worked as well as the Hangouts, and of course it wasn't free. Jeff, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so it's working okay? Yes, you're coming in a little bit low, but we'll take it. Okay, uh, I don't know the, the people in the room. Uh, my name is Osvaldo Rodriguez from Argentina. Uh, we worked with Jeff uh, in MOOC, I think it was a few weeks back. And uh, okay, today I was uh, hearing you on the live chat for a few minutes and then decided to hang out. And Perhaps we could talk a little bit about uh, Change 11. I don't know, I suppose we are all participants there, or how is, is that so? I would, and you're especially well suited to talk about this week's topic. First, I wanted to ask you about the AI MOOC, because I know during EduMOOC we were talking about that and you were really, really looking forward to see how Stanford did MOOCs, and you were smart enough yes. to actually hang with those AI people. Uh, have you been tuning in, and how has it been going? Yeah, I'm registered and I, I, I will do the course. Uh, my background for the people who don't, uh, who I haven't met before, I'm a theoretical physicist. I've been doing education now for the last uh, six years, uh, basic research. Very much interested in everything that's open education. And this artificial intelligence course is a particular, uh, uh, something different in the MOOC uh, world because. It's really, if they can handle 230,000 people, it's going to be very, they're going to be very intelligent. Uh, but anyhow, even a smaller number, uh, but it's, the question is if that's going to be really a MOOC or not. So I'm registered and it hasn't started yet. So oh, it it's nothing that, no, it starts in October. Uh, the, the, the actual course with the Stanford students has already started. What they do is they uh, make uh, videos and they're going to show them then to the people online sharing, etc., etc. 
But um, let me come back to the Change 11, because uh, I, I work quite close to the people of Moby MOOC, which was a, a MOOC uh, done with uh, several people in uh, Europe and uh, Canada, etc. And it was really a, a fantastic experience. That was my first MOOC. I had never done the CCKs. <clears throat> but uh, then I went to EduMOOC, which again had a central point, which was the emails done by a, a Google group. Uh, but I was very surprised now with uh, doing Change 11 that there's no way I can communicate. I mean, I'm really frustrated. And I would like to know if this is my experience. Uh, you see, there is no uh, common place. People are totally dispersed. You get the information afterwards when uh, you, you get the daily. And it's too late to, re you know, to come back with the ideas and discuss. So I was going to suggest to the organizers to, to have some, uh, what was very successful for me uh, in, in, in the Moby MOOC and then in EduMOOC, although EduMOOC uh, uh, there were a lot of lurkers and not too many active people, uh, but still it was very, very nice every day receiving mails and seeing how people got engaged in different groups. There was one central place where people met which was uh, actually receiving the, the, the Google list mails. And everybody else, what they did at the end is they, they put the blogs, etc., but they announced them always there. So you come to the computer and you see your mails coming in and you go on the day looking at them. And it's not the same like coming at the end of the day and looking at 200 posts and, and trying to figure out which is nice and where you're going to go. So I'm really uh, quite... Um, I lost interest in Change 11. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it actually on the research side where we have a, a group of people where we, are, we have really a Google, a, a Google uh, list there of researchers around Change 11. And there there is a central place where people get and put their ideas. It's always the email. Uh, it could be an alternative, but I think that's the best, the best thing. I don't know what people think about that. Perhaps it's my, my own idea. Thoughts? You're communicating now, and this is a place. Yeah, but it's not the same. You see, the other thing was a very active thing daily, you know, with Rebecca and people in Canada and people in England and people here, there. Now I know about Jeff, so I looked it up and I, I came here. I saw it, you know, I got into a very interesting conversation, and uh, so I decided to hang out uh, to, to come into the conversation. But, but it's not the same as what happened in EduMOOC, or it's not the same as happened in, 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 in the other book, which was called MobiMOOC. Did uh, MobiMOOC use Google Groups also? Yes. That was the main center. Uh, it, it had a wiki, which people used, and it was also a centralized place. But the centralized the place where you saw all the activity going around, any, you see, we're going to have how many weeks? Uh, 30 weeks, I don't know, I can't remember now, but many weeks. A guy that comes in in the third week, he doesn't know what's going on. He, he will start, you know, looking at blogs and deciding. By the time that went, the, the, the talk, you know, the, the, the actual seminar went out, he doesn't know what the blogs are. Every time people are trying to catch up. The only way is to come in and see people, you know, putting mails, putting mails, putting mails, and you, you start catching up and then you, you decide, oh, I like this thread, and you continue on that thread. And there's a lot of lurkers. This is what happened in MobiMook, and this is what happened also in the... EduMOOC, a lot of people that don't participate, but they're there. You can see them. You talked about this, Jeff, that I was very surprised looking at the numbers. Perhaps 50 people participated in, you know, engaging like we're doing today. But you would have, if you looked at the, at the, at the Google site, you would see that there are lurkers who are very active and something 200 and 300 people lurking and looking at that activity. So I, I don't know. Um, actually, I was thinking of sending an email to... Uh, a proposal or some kind of, or doing myself, I could set up a, a Google uh, group with uh, Change 11, that's a part, part of the MOOC idea, but the problem there is that a guy that comes next, he, he would know about it, because I would all the time be, the only way that this could happen is that the organizer did it this way, but I, want, I would like to hear feedback on this. Can, can you tell just a really brief what Change 11 is? I'm sorry if I'm the only one that doesn't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's called the, the mother of MOOCs, MOOCs of the MOOCs, or something like that. It's a proposal by uh, Stephen uh, Downs and uh, Dave Cormier and uh, George, Siemens. George Siemens. And these are the people that actually did the CCK 08 and the first uh, online uh, massive courses. And it's going to happen during uh, 
45 weeks. How many weeks, uh, Jeff? I can't remember. How many? I think 38 Until or 40. May. How many? Go through May. Mm. Right. Okay. I just didn't. I wasn't aware of the, the time. Of it. It's, each week you have a different topic. You have a different uh, yeah. idea, different from CCK uh, 08, and um, the other ones that this group did is that it's not uh, centered around them, but every week they have a different what they call the, uh, a guy that organizes, and he, he gives a seminar, and they have these problems with the um, illuminate, well, not illuminate, this uh, big blue button and things like that. But there's no way. I I, I really think that it's uh, dispersed. So this is my opinion. Can I, I ask? Mm -hmm. Um, well, my impression just did. Oh, there you are. Um, I sort of lost my thought. Uh, first of all, because each week is a self contained segment, it makes it difficult. I mean, it makes it easy for the lurkers. For me, for example, I'm so busy, I'm not going to be able to participate probably till about November. So lurking is about all I can do, but what be wrong with just your general run the mill wiki? You want FaceTime? Is that what you're saying? You want face connection to follow up and discuss the each week? I I, I think maybe because I mean I kind of I was tuning into Edgemook too, and we had the the flow of Google Group emails, so. You know, the change 11, we get the daily newsletter, which I actually I quite like. Um, but with the Edumook, we had sort of this constant, whoever emailed the Google group got included in that daily uh, shot or digest of, of emails. I, you know, I'd say why not just start a Google group for, for change and see how that goes. The Facebook group is robust and active. Um, I find the MOOC in general a lot more active, which is uh, engaging. And the you know the Google groups for me was, you know, I checked it, but not that much more carefully than I would the newsletter or the Facebook group. So it hasn't made that big a difference for me, I think. Hmm. I have a question for Lisa, because uh, in the in the the change MOOC, the aggregation is being done on Grasshopper. And Lisa, in her course, is aggregating content somehow. How are you doing it, Lisa? I'm are doing you, it on... Where's the center Word... in your MOOC? It's your a spoke, I'm sorry. WordPress. It, yeah, it's, it's a WordPress blog using feed WordPress plugin. But the, that means that the students or the participants are all using WordPress? No, They're it'll pull in, in feeds. Things. No, it'll pull in feeds from pretty much everything. Most of them are using EduBlogs because most of them were um, uh, newbies who weren't quite sure how to start with blogging at all. Uh, so there was a big hurdle at the very, very beginning of the class. So uh, we pointed most of them to EduBlogs. That if you weren't certain what platform you wanted to use, go use that one, or WordPress.com. So most of them are there, but we've got people. Uh, a, a couple people are using Posturus, and it does. If it's got an RSS mm -hmm. feed, I can pull it in through Feed WordPress, and it it does fine. So Feed WordPress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Feed okay. WordPress. All one word is a is a plugin that's that's pretty well maintained. I had some complications with it. I I had to learn quite a bit to be able to use it effectively, but um, it's it's pretty robust. It's it's done a really good job because we've got about 95 feeds pulling in now. And, and um, so it it's doing they, it. They tag their feeds and, they, and they're pulled in by feed WordPress? Yeah, some people, um, the newbies are kind of just blogging for the class so we pull in their entire feed and the some of the more experienced people are using the tag and then I'm just pulling in the feed just for that tag, which is not hard to do at all. In WordPress or Blogger using, or any of those. Are you using Twitter at all? We um, we have a Twitter hashtag, but not it's not getting a whole lot of use. We have a Facebook group that was actually set up for the whole program of online teaching, not just this um, this particular class, and that's very active. There's been a lot of people in there, so people tend seem to be preferring Facebook right now to Twitter uh, for yeah. discussion and um, commenting on each other's blogs mostly. It has a lot of instant gratification to it. 
Yeah, well, and they're there anyway. This is the thing about right. Facebook. I despise Facebook. I can't stand Facebook, and everybody's in Facebook. There's nothing I can do about it, and they're there. Yeah. So um, I had so set up the it? program. Yeah, I use it, and when I set up the program for online teaching group initially, I thought, well, nobody's really going to use it, but I've already got some people from the college. They're already on Facebook. What the hell? And I set it up, and it, it became active immediately, and then a whole bunch of other people started to join it, asked to join it. It got really big. So it's where the people are. You have to go where the people are. I think, I think basically it's that people want one uh, meeting place. It doesn't matter if it's Facebook, it could be uh, Google Plus, or it could be the Google site, uh, the Google group. It doesn't matter. What you want is one place where all the action is. And then you derive and you go to where you want, to the blogs, and see what other people are doing. You join with other people and you, you get some back channels, etc. I mean, Jeff most probably. Uh, you had uh, every time we were doing a new MOOC, you, your your chat was announced there, and immediately people went to your to, to, to talks like like today. Now you are doing it through Facebook. If you didn't use Facebook, nobody would. I mean, I wouldn't have realized where you are because it always comes late. You see, the the, the daily is past. It, 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 it's not. There has to be one centralized place, and I think what you're doing with Facebook is is one one way of, of doing it. The other thing is, uh, for me, it's much nicer than the emails because the, the people really express their ideas in, in, in a kind of blogging, and then you start discussion in small threads, and some participate in one thread, and others participate in another thread, and it's very, very, very active. I like it very much, much more than the Facebook that I think is the only thing that now in Change 11 is getting people together, it's uh, clustering them, it's uh, gluing them. But I wonder whether I people agree. want a separate space for where they get the information and a separate space for where they socialize and converse and talk. Because even all of the MOOCs thus far, that's been somewhat separate. In other words, uh, for example, the early connectivism courses had Moodle as the forums where you chatted, but they didn't post all of the course information in Moodle. That was posted uh, elsewhere or you post things on a blog but you don't have your forum on the blog, you don't, you've got your forum over at Google Groups. There seems to be a, a separation in most of these and I've had to do it myself. People are not talking on the aggregated blog. I wanted them talking on their own blogs so they talk there but they also talk in Facebook. It's almost like the social space is always separate from the information space or the content space. Interesting. <coughs> I want to check in with Stephen um, quickly to see so. if he has audio. Any progress, Stephen? I guess we'll take that as a no. Well, ideally, it would be nice if you could just go to wherever people are. And um, Technorati used to do that. You could just tag your posts and then come up. But Technorati doesn't work like that anymore. And as I understand with the Grasshopper, I think you have to enroll with Grasshopper, so you're picking up, uh, picking up the, it doesn't go out and find whatever I happen to say about the course on a given day, it just, it only picks it up if I register with Grasshopper. And, um, yes. yeah. yeah, so, and, and a WordPress, feed WordPress, that you have to register with it as well? Well, in our case, what I did at the beginning of the class was I just made a little widget box that let people add their own blog and that that fed into the blog role and the blog mm -hmm. role fed into Feed WordPress. So mm -hmm. it, it people would just say, oh, well, I want to participate. So they were supposed to email me to let me know and then put their feed in. Um, some mm -hmm. people, that was no problem. Other people, that was a bit of an issue and I put it in for them. But uh, then once we got going, once we were into week three, I just turned that off and then I put in their feed. But at the beginning, yeah, they were plugging in their own feeds and it would just come in automatically. So they weren't subscribing necessarily to the blog, although they could themselves. And our second week's activity was to have them set up a Google Reader and the first thing they had to do was subscribe to the aggregated blog. So That, that brings a question up from my standpoint and that is I'm having trouble deciding how much participants need to be directed and how much they need to suss out their own personal learning environments and it's it's sort of a a trade-off you know how do you balance those two issues out and the idea of having a central meeting place with all of the participants is is really a great one but what can hold that many people uh, especially with a video 
Facebook is about the only one that I have found that, that can do that. For me, um, Clay Christensen, I mean Clay Shirky's cognitive surplus is coming to mind huge here that um, we do have a surplus and the conversation is where it's at. I think that's why we're creating spaces like this. I think that's why your comment about do we separate where the knowledge is, you know, the information is based and where the conversations happen and people are choosing these conversation places. I think that needs to be for choice. and. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen Deb Roy's um, TED Talk on the birth of a word. We have technology now um, to, to tag those conversations and within those tags um, the system that you're looking for to, to now flow out to the different places um, and, and extrapolate per word recognition or whatever, that could be our linkage to the spaces that are self-directed, you know, per your choice. Um, but I think our focus really needs to be on the web as opposed to technology and the connections that we're making per conversation. To me, that's the, the, the main ship. Um, and and we, we have to go where the people are. I mean, it, it, it's um, John Hagel's uh, power of pull. The, the web is alluring. And if, if, if we go where they're at, I think of Dana Boyd as well and all of her research that she's always gone to where the people are um, to see how they're learning. So I think you guys are hitting on so many key issues, but I really feel like if we want a central place, it's going to be about the conversation. You know, so if we could amp this up more, do some more nagging and, and get some, <laughs> some word nag recognition going so that that is how we take ourselves off to these other nodes, off to other spaces. Um, let's let, let the technology do that, rather than saying everybody come here for the knowledge base. Yeah, it's the worry is that you've got people who don't have the experience to even know most of what you're talking about. The that's, whole that's idea. That's the beauty of it though. That's the beauty of it because what we're saying is the basis is conversation. Everyone knows how to talk. Mm -hmm. You know, so that conversation is the basis. It's not, do you know how to blog? Do you know where to go to blog? Do you know what a feeder is? It's the basis is now the gathering. That's why Facebook is popular because it's about mm -hmm. conversation. You know, so if that's the basis, it's simple. Yeah, that's a great point. So, Technorati used to do it. Technorati, with, if you tagged your blog post, I mean, we did, when Technorati was doing this well, we, we did a little experiment we called Writing Matrix. And any English language learner who would blog and tag his or her post Writing Matrix uh, would end up in the Technorati feed. The, the Technorati, you know, you didn't have to go and register yourself at a, a site, you simply had to create a blog post. And the user had to tell Technorati that they were looking for blogs with no authority because obviously these first time bloggers had no authority. So you had to tell Technorati that you didn't care because Technorati is geared toward a market that uh, is looking for credible blog postings. So they've kind of gone over to that market now. But what they used to do was they used to open themselves up to anybody who used a tag like obscure as a writing matrix. And if the, just by tagging their post, we could find students in uh, Slovenia, could find students in Argentina, and they could find the students in Venezuela. And, and then if somebody else joined the project from Brazil just by having his students tag their blog post writing matrix. So the, the students were finding one another. So that's, um, you know, what you really want to do, I think. Uh, I'm searching for this tool again because Technorati is not working like this anymore. I, I use this Google Blog Search and it's it's not bad. It has an RSS feed. It's I get some formatting issues sometimes mm -hmm. and as much as I hate to admit it, sometimes Bing even works better. Uh, and it, Does it search on tags? Yes. It, it does search it does? on tags because that's what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. I was trying to mm -hmm. figure out what to do with all these latecomers who want to participate mm -hmm. in the class, but they mm -hmm. really can't follow every single week. And so I needed exactly what you're talking about, and I knew Technorati mm -hmm. didn't do it. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I went to the Google search, and I created a feed from the, the potsert 11 tag, which is our tag for the class, and it does mm -hmm. pull in anything. Well, I don't know if okay. it's catching them all, but it's trying to catch sure. them all if it was getting the tags because when I do a Google blog search there's usually a mention of that 
thing I'm looking for in the post itself. And so, it gets the tags uh, and the other stuff, which is nice too. Like if someone mm -hmm. forgets to tag it, well, I guess it depends mm -hmm. how obscure your tag well, is. You're looking for pots herd, you know. I mean, yeah. you could get yeah. anything. You guys, but, uh, I'm sorry, but I have to to bug out. But I, I want to say one more thing. Hotel really was started on the premise of having a conversation, and then those words being tagged. Um, Deb Roy's TED again um, does that and tags the conversation, and um, that's what we're trying to do with our research with um, this innovation lab is. It's a video logging that the kids are doing, and we're trying to do a word recognition. So, again, I'll, I, I want to push this simplification of that, that we're not limiting people who don't blog. We're not limiting people that don't even know, don't know how to blog. We're, it sounds ridiculous that we could go off of conversations, you know, but we could if we use technology. We could be tagging those conversations to do exactly what you're saying about the blogs, and now everyone is a player because... You know, yep. most everyone can talk or, or get in some way. And I'm really sorry, but I'm late for a meeting. But thank you for letting me jump in. Nice to meet all of you. Look forward to learning more from you. Great to see you. Come back soon. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was talking about was the conversation. That's where the conversations are, is where people are tagging. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, sorry. No, uh, my comment is the following. I, again, this is my experience. I've gone through three, three MOOCs now, and the two uh, first ones uh, I find them interesting, this third one I'm totally lost. And I gave a talk the other day in a, in, in a university here in downtown Buenos Aires about MOOCs and about uh, open learning, etc. And then I advocated the MOOCs and I said, well, there's Change 11 going on, there's a postdoc from Brazil doing some work in the university. She was very interested. I said, you need to, to know English because the Spanish community, the Brazilian community, maybe it's not so big. She, she was very fluent in English, so she could participate as we are participating now, which I think, it's, uh, I mean, you need that in this particular subject. And she came back to me the next week saying that she, she didn't know what to do. You know, she didn't go through the first week because she, mm -hmm. she came late. And uh, she received the daily, and she didn't know what to do. She abandoned. Mm -hmm. So I think it's... Um, Independently, if it's my experience, I, I think it's not what you what you're doing um, in, in your course, which you just described. Since you are taking it so personally, you're you're doing this uh, RSS feed, feed, etc. You you are the centralizing person of, of, of your MOOC. So everybody, you see, when you have this uh, uh, Google groups or whatever, or even now, at, at least you can do it with 200 participants in, in the Facebook in Change 11. Is you know the people, you know the names, you see them coming in. So I don't know Jeff puts his uh, his talks. The other guy says he has a blog, and, and you see it, and you come to the computer. I, I don't know. Everybody I think comes to the computer twenty or thirty times a day. You don't want to sit at the end of the day and see a list of two hundred blogs and see which one you like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What you do is you're just filtering by the threads and by some ideas, and then you you get in. So. This is my comment, mm -hmm. and um, okay. I, I think the Change 11 is not the way I would do a, a, a MOOC if I had to do it, especially one that has every week a different topic. Because if, if a guy comes, sorry. Um, I, I think we have audio from Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Um, I did want to follow up uh, on Asfal's Oak. Osvaldo's comment. One thing I do miss from um, having a Google group is a continuity of discussion. Like in the EduMOOC, we had the Wikipedia article um, and a number of discussions that kept going throughout the whole MOOC. And there was a, a central place where they, they happened. There are discussions, you know, when we get the newsletter and change MOOC, there's the uh, discussion section. But that's really just posts on downs on, on the change MOOC, and it's just a few comments. It doesn't seem to have the same uh, continuity. Uh, Stephen, I think we are getting audio from you. Oh, no, I thought people froze. Stephen, if well, if you I, can say I'm something, sorry, say I something. Must, I must say uh, goodbye to everybody. I also have a meeting in a few minutes. Actually, a class. <laughs> So uh, nice to meet you all, and uh, most probably I'll see you. I don't know if uh, Jeff has another week uh, next week. We, we get together. Sounds great. Yeah, Good to see you, see you again. Okay. Yeah.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, we are uh, past the, the hour mark, so perhaps we should uh, head into the home stretch. And the live session starts in, in less than an hour. Uh, Carol, I don't know oh, if we yeah. solved your problem, or not your problem, but your answered your question. You gave me lots of things to explore, and that's the best answer I can ask for right now. Thank you. Uh, any other closing thoughts, things to mention, thoughts to leave us with? I have a question. Um, from we Dan. have learning together. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I was just going to say that uh, uh, Kate is going to possibly join us on. Yes, I have two questions. I'll make them brief. Um, relative to what you all were discussing, uh, Vance has got one week left of our course, um, and part of it was tagging. And part of it was be sure you're on Facebook. Now I have a Facebook page, and I every time I think about going to Facebook, I think, oh, I've got a lot of work to do, so I talk myself out. So to be honest, I haven't visited the Facebook page since this course started. Now, um, in order for me to pick up any feeds of any discussions that somebody's had on Facebook regarding our course, would I have to go into Google and Google E-V-O-M-L-I-T to see if it picks up or do I have to go to Facebook? Or the, what we were talking about is that whole discussion thread off to me unless I decide to go to that area. Can I bring it to me? Will it be um, aggregated or am I going to have to go to each, each participant's site? Since we're a smook, a very small <laughs> the medium, uh, on open online course, uh, I think you can probably get it through your RSS feed reader because it's really pretty much you and Robin at the moment. So um, at, at Facebook, to tell you frankly, I haven't really been to that page. Uh, they okay. stopped emailing. They stopped sending email notifications now. But of course, we would get an email notification up to about a week ago. So, okay. Um, I guess it was more of a Facebook question, because you know they're they are trying so hard to rule the world with Google. I mean, to beat Google to ruling the world. I don't know if you all saw the whole week of drama about Facebook's unfolding, and now all the tech people are saying Google. They're going to blow Google out of the water. And I think it's, um, like she said earlier, I think it's an either or. I think people like their spaces. They get comfortable with them. I love how simple Google is. I'm not going to go over to Facebook no matter what they do unless I have to. Um, so I, it was just a question about Facebook. If anybody over there was dialoguing relative to our course, would I know unless I, um, I guess I'd have to just do a uh, tag search because so much stuff on Facebook is not searchable yeah yeah and and I don't think you search it either you'd sort of have to be on space on Facebook and it's just a space um, yeah. Lisa commented about her Facebook space she's there because that's where people are and I think that's what you have to do if people go there you know if you have a, a 10 participants, you're probably going to have some people who are in the, the Facebook group. I've got other Facebook groups that just travel because the people there who are in the group, you know, a group of runners, let's say, they're all on Facebook, you know, so um, they th those those groups really go. And I think also when we started it a couple of years ago, we had a little bit more traffic with Facebook. But right now, there's not that many of the people who are participating in the course uh, into Facebook. We're going to do it again in uh, January, February, possibly, because it's with the EVO sessions and it's a free session. Uh, it's probably going to ha attract more people, so you might see a little bit more activity in the Facebook uh, area. But, you know, you just have to go and check it out. If you don't want to go there, don't worry about it. It's not that it was know, just you're a really going to miss anything. Yeah, it was just yeah. a question mm -hmm. about different uh, pulling... Um, the information of different threads and people talking in different spaces. My last question is, I see Jeff, did you upload this EFL 537, the, the spreadsheet and a Yeah, the spreadsheet was by accident. The presentation was to just demonstrate the screen sharing. Sharing. So Very cool. Yeah. I love this. I love Google because it's so simple. And boy, I don't know about you guys, but there's just been such a surge of Google Plus traffic and people adding me to circles this past week, and I, I assume it's because they made it, you know, non-invite last week.
but I guess I I figured since so many people had 150 invites, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. But I think it has. I think it's, you know, I, I think the growth was really huge for the first few weeks and it plateaued and it seems to be uh, growing rapidly again. Well, we'll all stay tuned. That was one of my points in the chat. It gets exhausting when you have multiple spaces and you sign on for a course and because each space is constantly changing like your technorati and just being able to to stay in the space you're comfortable with and adapting to its upgrades and changes which are so fluid these days weekly <laughs> yeah that's that's that 21st century literacy ask. don't get too comfortable stay flexible yeah, no, yeah. I know, it, 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 there one kind of course will put you in a space and you go to that space and you're comfortable in the space and they you know something happens there you learn something and the, everyone is happy in that space another kind of course is trying to get you to cope with what is really there on the internet it's, it's just a, that what's really there is lots of spaces the spaces are always changing so if the course is about that then of course you have to go and experience the different spaces and just by experience and we wouldn't you know if, if you if you if we took us let's say we, we did it in Moodle or desire to learn or whatever you'd never know about hangout you know you just never would end up no, that's fine. It's just when you're talking about how to get a MOOC and get people, especially people that are new to the internet, new to all these things, up and dialoguing and a cohesive dialogue. How do you do it? And then, for example, I was reading this morning about, um, oh, I don't know, one of my tech things had a how to deal with all the new changes coming with Facebook. And so set aside 30 minutes. And it's fine if you're already hanging out in Facebook. I'm just saying if you're leading a MOOC um, and you're having to decide, and I think the idea that having a, a place for information and then having a hangout, which I think is a great term for discussion, is nice. But anyway, that's all. Right, that's all. our homework for the week. Figure out how to yes. do MOOCs better. Um, I do want to uh, <laughs> do. learning together. <laughs> Uh, 1300 GMT on Sundays. 1530. 1530. 1530. Yeah. You've changed the time yeah, officially. Because, that wasn't just for me. Well, I got a class at okay. 1300. Yeah, it's not really changed officially. It's just happens to be the time when I can make it. 1530. That's Carol, when it, is your live event? That's okay this with week? you, Kate. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Kate's all right with 1530. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a convenient time for me. Okay. And Carol, all right. live event. The live event is tomorrow. <clears throat> excuse me, 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight uh, Eastern Time, Eastern Daylight Time, and the link will be posted in week three. As soon as I decide where we're going to do it, <laughs> it'll probably be in an Illuminate uh, that the college actually has. All right, so that's 23 hours from now. Correct. 1400 GMT. <laughs> Lisa, anything to plug? Hours from now. 23 <laughs> minus 12 minutes. I, I've got a. I don't know if I'm going to make it that long. I'll have to hold my breath. <laughs> Lisa, anything, you, any Jeff. events or anything else to... Uh, not not this week, except the mentors are going to meet is all that's happening this week. And I'm hoping that starting next week, we're going to actually you know, get the hell organized. Good luck that's with that. Goal. That's my <laughs> <That's laughs> Well, if you're going to do it on Facebook, good luck, because I think well, next I week they're rolling know, out. Oh, yeah, I don't know exactly. We, there's so many choices of where we can do it, and, and just getting getting folks who are not that comfortable on the web into a space is a challenge in and of itself. But since we haven't been planning ahead, I don't think we can expect too much yet. So, there you are. So my plan for this week is to find a plan. All right. Tune in next week cool. to find out Lisa's session. plan. Sounds like my kind of course. All right. <laughs> Tomorrow's session has George Siemens, so if you want to talk to him about personal learning environments, network knowledge, tune in. And do um, we know where I that's said, going to happen? To when? Where? Online. Well, it's going to be an, it's probably going to be on Illuminate, and I just have to put the link on the page, and I'll be doing that by later today. Okay. All right. So well, that's in the CMC okay. uh, 11 MOOC, week three, George Siemens. Sounds great. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you all very Thank much. All. Great to connect. Thank you, Lots Jeff. Lots to think about. Have a great week, and we'll see you next you time. You too. Bye. Thanks, Jeff, for Bye -bye. having this party. Always a pleasure <laughs> hanging out.